right. Let's see, are we live? Okay, we're live. All right, y'all. I had a little bit of technical difficulties on that first one. But uh, again, I will say, if you don't know who I am, I am Wave Magnetic. And right now, I'm going to be doing a mixing session. I just wrote this new song. It's kind of like this chill type thing. And um, I wanted to bring you guys in on my process for mixing and uh, getting the songs ready to go uh, to be released on like Spotify and everything. Bring you into my world a little bit. And hopefully this will help other producers as well. Uh, I know I've got some uh, some followers who are producers. And um, I'm thinking that this will help in terms of like, uh, you know, uh, getting your songs mixed, finished, and uh, able to uh, send them out and get them released, you know, because it's a process, you know, mixing is definitely a process. And um, we're going to work on, I'm going to show you my process for getting everything mixed, getting it mastered. Um, and, uh, yeah, a little bit of, uh, production and stuff right now. I'm sharing this to a few groups because, um, I want to make sure that everybody, all the, uh, platforms that I'm a part of get a chance to learn from what I'm doing and just, you know, share, share information. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see here. Do, do, do. We got those. Let's get my Ableton people in here. Ableton. Yep. Oh, wow. We got a lot of Ableton's. So if you guys use Ableton, this will be a big help for sure, because you'll learn a lot about some of the functions that you may or may not know about. And, um, you know, I know it helps me when I get to see how people use some of the platforms, you know, uh, let's see, let's get Ableton in here again. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Right now I'm just sharing this to a few groups, to my people in uh, different groups. Um, and if you're in one of these groups, hello, if you don't know who I am again, I am wave magnetic. And uh, I make electronic music mixed with a lot of uh, trumpet because that's what I do. You feel me? So, all right. I just shared it to some people. And let's make sure sound is happening. I think sound is happening. Ready? Yep. Sound is happening. Uh, See, I'm David making... Weaver, what's happening? Wyatt Tyrus, what's happening? And we got anybody else who's in here that... Uh, I saw the ones I know. Okay, cool. All right, y'all. So let's get right to this. So while I'm mixing, I'm going to turn my microphone off. So you, you won't necessarily hear me talking. But uh, if you have questions, I have the chat opened up. So you can send me a message if you have any questions about what I'm doing. And I'll get to them as they come and as I see them. And uh, I'll try and kind of elaborate on what I got going on while I'm doing it as much as possible. Some stuff I may move a little bit fast just because as I'm reacting emotionally to the music, I'm going to make emotional decisions. Uh, and and I got to kind of respond in that moment. OK, so this right here, this song I is so new that I don't even have a name for it, but I'm just calling it chill number three because it's the third chill song that i kind of wrote and i think i'm going to make an this is going to be part of an ep uh i know the ep is going to be called chill wave okay and uh yeah let's get to it all right i'm gonna turn the mic off now and if you have questions to type them in the comment section and uh i'll, I'll try and answer as many as i can okay all right here we go
So that right there is how I get like my initial balance. That's really what I was doing is just kind of getting it to a place where you can kind of just kind of feel out what it is. Like you can hear all the instruments, you can get a feel for what the song is about, you know, and that's just the drop section. So now I'm going to move over to another part so I can get some of the other instruments in uh, and see what I got going on. Let's go a little earlier. All right, I'm going to turn the mic off again. Here we go. Yeah.
Cool. All right. So that feels like that's in a pretty good place now. Okay. So after I get a pretty good balance throughout the whole thing, now I'm going to go back to uh, this drop section. Okay. So when I'm mixing, a lot of times the I focus on getting the drop uh, or, I should, or the main dancey bit. <laughs> or another way you can think about it is say you're doing a song that's like, uh, like a pop song. And it's like... Uh, I work on the chorus first, most of the time, because that's going to be the loudest part of the song. It's going to be the part where all the parts are in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, uh, my mix bus chain together. And my mix bus chain is really simple. I'm going to have a, um, some kind of distortion plug in first. Then I'm going to have an EQ. I usually use the fab filter EQ to cut off some low end and then cut off the low end on the sides so that uh, you don't want to have any low frequency information on the sides and below 100 hertz. So I cut all of that out. And I actually cut off some high end because uh, high information above 20 kilohertz is like basically useless information when it comes to um having songs on Spotify and whatnot. The funny thing is that if you have too much of that in your song, they're going to actually turn your song down. So a lot of times if your songs are too soft, like if you play somebody else's song and you play your song right after and your sounds quiet compared to theirs, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the reason why is because there's too much high frequency information in there. So Spotify is kind of like uh, analyzing it and saying that the song is louder than it actually is. So it'll sort it'll turn your song down. So handling that high end is very important. Handling that low end is very important because you don't need anything below 20 Hertz. No information below 20 Hertz is useful. And a lot of times, most songs, you don't even need 20 Hertz. Really on most songs, you only need down to like 30, anything lower than 30. Most of the time, depending on the key of your song, but most of the time, anything below 30 hertz is almost, is damn near useless. So I cut pretty high and I'll show you how I do it. So I'm just giving you a little thing. So after that, I put a compressor on there and I usually use the uh, SSL bus compressor. I have a plug-in Alliance one. And then I put an EQ and I use uh, Ableton's Isotope. I use the Exciter, okay? And I use that in a very specific way to get a very specific sound, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I do it, and I'm about to do it right now. So I'm gonna hit this mic, and if you got any questions, type them in, but if not, just check this out. This right here is how I cut off my low end. I set the fab filter plug-in on my master bus. I always do this. So I set the fab filter plug-in to linear phase. All right. Then I cut it below the lowest note of the bass. Okay. So this song right here bah, 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 is in C. I think it's in C major or like A minor or something like that. So the cool thing about fab filter is that it gives you the notes here. You can kind of see this is C1. This is the lowest possible note that the sub that the bass is going to hit. Okay. And if you look, the frequency for that is 32 Hertz. You don't need in this particular song. I don't need nothing lower than 32 Hertz. Anything lower than 32 Hertz is useless to me. Okay. So 
Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everything below 32 hertz, okay? But I'm not going to cut at 32 hertz because then it's going to make my it's going to make my low C in the bass a little bit quieter. So I'm going to cut right underneath that, okay? And uh, I want to get rid of everything below there because I don't I don't need it, okay? So I'm going to go down to 27 hertz, just enough to give it a little bit of breathing room, all right? And uh, then I'm going to put another cut, just like I said before. I'm going to put that I'm going to turn it to 24 dB per octave, okay? And now I'm going to put this up to about 150, all right, right there. And, like, right now, this is set to uh, stereo. So this is going to just cut off all my low end. But on Fab Filter, you can control it, make it go to the sides, the mids, or the mids and the sides, okay? So I'm going to just set mine to the side right there. So now this right here is going to get rid of everything that's on the sides below 155 hertz, okay? So that's going to make sure there's no low frequencies below 100 hertz for me. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a high, I'm going to do a cut in the high end, okay? And I'm going to set that to, again, 24 dB per octave. And I'm going to set that at 19, what, basically 20K, okay? Cut everything above 20K because it's, is fucking useless. It's useless. You don't need it. Um, not for you know dance music at least. You because your songs with dance music, you're trying to get the uh the song to be loud. I'm sorry. Anybody who tells you that you don't need your song to be loud and you're doing dance music or you're doing electronic music or whatever, they're bullshitting you. You need your songs to be loud. Okay. The general target is about minus eight RMS, okay. And I know that's louder than what they say on um, on Spotify. They say that it's going to be uh, brought down to like 14 LUFS or something like that, like minus 14. But you're mastering the minus eight because it gives a certain sound. And that's the sound of this genre. And on top of that, um, the song is going to if you're if you do a good song and uh, you you uh, do it well. DJs are going to want to play it. And if DJs want to play it, it's got to be loud enough to match the other songs. Okay. So in order to get it to be loud enough, you got to cut some high end. All right. So I always cut off around here, around 20 K on a fab filter. Now I'm going to uh, get into some compression. Um, my favorite compressor, my new favorite compressor, I should say, I just bought this thing and it sounds freaking amazing. I love this compressor. Uh, if I can, yeah, right here. The BX console, the BX townhouse. If y'all have not gotten this plug in, the, the townhouse, man, this is a dope, super dope uh, bus compressor. I love this bus compressor, okay? So basically, this is dance music, okay? If this wasn't dance music, I may do a different setting, but this is dance music. So with that being said, I have I do the same setting all the time. That's a set it and forget it kind of thing. I set my release to the fastest, which is 100 milliseconds, and I set my attack to the slowest, which is 30 milliseconds. This setting right here is going to give you some super dope punch, okay? It's going to glue your mix together, and it's going to give you some punch, okay? Uh, make sure that the drums are hitting hard and everything just be clear and, and really solid together, okay? So, let's see here. This is, I'm going to show you what this sounds like now, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to turn the mic off. You see how that sounds? So I'm going to do a before and after on that, okay? So I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to turn it on and you see what this townhouse does. It 
it basically brought out the um all the stuff all all the percussion on the sides it made it so that everything just kind of glued together it, it shortened the dynamic range but it glued it together in a really nice way and that kick drum got really punchy when i did that okay so that's what i do right there and then the next thing i generally put on is some kind of pull tech uh eq and again this is something that i set and forget okay i do the same exact setting on all of my mixes because I'm doing dance music. If I wasn't doing dance music, I would probably do something a little different, but I'm doing dance music. So this is the setting I use. I set it to 60. I turn the boost up to three. Okay. Then I set this to about 8.5 ish here in the bandwidth. I leave it at 12 K. And uh, now I'm going to boost the high end until it's, I can hear it until it sounds right to me. Usually it's around four. Uh, but the high end sometimes changes depending on how much high end frequency information is in the track. Okay. So let's see what I got here. You see what I'm saying? That right there, that they put you in a really good place so that you don't have to boost crazy high on the high end or boost crazy amounts on your or your kick drum and your low end and stuff. Most of the time on my basses, I don't even EQ basses. EQ in the bass is actually like a lot of times EQ in the bass is a bad thing. Because if you boost or cut in the low end of a bass then what you're really going to be doing is making certain notes of the bass be louder than others. And that's in this kind of music, you're not necessarily trying to do that. You want the bass to kind of be around the same volume on all the notes. But say you boot, make a boost at like 60 hertz, okay? The 60 hertz is an actual note. So if you boost the 60 hertz, you're going to make that note at 60 hertz loud louder than the other notes and you don't necessarily want that like you want the the sub to be constant okay so this prevents you from having to having to do all of that kind of stuff so here we go next thing i use is uh the uh the exciter from isotope
And that right there, that's my starting place right there, okay? So I do all of that and I mix through all of this. So this is this is my mix bus chain, okay? So so again, so you see it. First thing I do is I put on the NLS, okay? I usually like the the uh the SSL uh preset for that. I usually don't touch it. You could drive it more, but a lot of times you don't need to. That gives just enough, okay? The next thing I do is I pull up Fab Filter. I set it to linear phase. I cut at 27 hertz. A lot of the times it's 27 hertz. Uh, then I do the sides. I cut at 150 on the sides. Then I cut at 20K on the top end, okay? Then the next thing I do is I pull up, this is my, my new baby right here. I pull up my BX Townhouse. The bus compressor is basically an SSL compressor. You can use any SSL compressor. Technically, you can use any compressor you want to, but this is the one that I like for dance music and for rock because I've been definitely mixing a fair amount of rock these days too. Uh, now, the next thing I do is I pull up a Pultec plugin, okay? It doesn't matter which one. It could be the Waves. This is the T-Rex one. It could be UAD. I don't care which one it is. I will grab whichever one I have, and that's the one I'm going to use. And I usually use pretty much the same setting, which is 60 hertz. I boost this up to three, whatever the heck that means. And then I, at 12K, I boost this up to 3.7, four, somewhere around four, 3.7, somewhere in that area, wherever it sounds good. I set this to around eight, 8.5, nine, somewhere between eight and nine in the bandwidth, okay? Then the final thing I put on is my ozone. Oh man, without ozone, I don't know what I will be doing. I put on ozone. Now with ozone, I set it in mid side mode. Okay, uh, I use ozone to get a to get that sheen on my songs from the beginning. I get more high end. I get a little bit more bottom end. The same way it does almost the same thing as the pull tech, but I do it in mid side. And it's a distortion plugin, but it does it in a really nice way where you don't get all those honky frequencies that you can get from EQ. This does it with distortion. So it's, it's, it's I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it's pretty dope. Okay. And this is a little preset that I made where I usually set, uh, set my crossover points. And these are the one, the, uh, the distortion modules that I use. So I usually set my top two to retro middle one to warm. Uh, low to do a tryout and uh, then on the sides I do tape and I don't touch this on the on the sides usually so I just play with this until it sounds right okay because every song is different all right so I get width I get stereo width and I get harmonic distortion with this and it's almost like EQ so it really really makes a huge difference and this is my starting place it pretty much sounds like a record before I even finish, okay? So just so you get an idea of how this all works, all right? I'm gonna do a before and after, okay? So I'm gonna play it, and then I'm gonna turn my uh, mix bus on and off so you can hear what difference it makes, so you can see why I do this, and then you can come up with something that works for you. You know, I mix through this, mix through your mix bus, okay? Put mix, bu put, put um, plugins on your mix bus, mix through them so that your, your song has a sound from the beginning. And you're not just trying to just, you're not just isolating all the different sounds and struggling trying to get it to sound a certain way. Some people can make that work, but you know, I find I get better results when I start from a, a really good starting place. So check this out.
that makes such a big difference. And I haven't even touched the individual tracks. This is just on the mix bus. Let's see any questions we got coming up. Amari, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the love, man. Um, all right. So don't be shy. Uh, if you got questions, ask them so I can answer them. All right. So now the next thing I do is I go to my drums. I rarely mix anything in solo. A lot of times I do multiple instruments at the same time. So this is, I'm going to do the drums now. I start with the kick, but while I'm mixing the kick, I actually am listening to all the drums at the same time.
that's pretty much the drums right there. So, um, basically, I just did some basic EQ and compression. My favorite uh, plugin for dealing with drums is the SSL G channel. I like this one. That's from uh, Plugin Alliance. It really helps my drums to really not pretty hard. So I use this pretty much all the time on my drums. And uh, there's one more thing I want to do to the drums. And here's a little trick, okay? If you got a drum pattern, a drum beat, where the snare and the kick are both hitting at the same time, you might want to consider using a... Uh, using a clipper and using a limiter on your drums, okay? Because here it is. With a clipper, it shaves off the tops, okay? And you want your, it shaves off the peaks and you want your kicks and you want your snares to be hitting pretty much at the same level most of the time, especially the kick. You want the kick to be constantly hitting the same way when you're doing dance music. So if you put a compressor on your drum bus, it's gonna make the kick uh, be loud every time that the snare isn't hitting. And when the snare hits, the kick is gonna be quieter. So you don't really want that when you're doing dance music. And then when you start to master it, if you don't have something on the drum bus, then uh, when you put the limiter on, you're not gonna be able to get your track as loud as you need it to be because the drums are triggering the, the uh, limiter too much. And uh, it's gonna mess everything up later on down the line, okay? So in this instance, I have my snare and I have a snap layered on top of each other. And I have the, uh, the kick layered at the same time too. So that's kind of a lot hitting at the same time. And that's gonna make it so that um, when I get to mastering, it's gonna mess up my whole my whole dynamics. It's gonna mess everything up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a a um, a, a clipper on there because then that will just shave off the peaks. So every time the snare and the snaps and the kick drum hit at the same time, it's gonna shave all that off so that it won't it won't push the kick drum down. It'll just clip it so that it won't get louder, which is what I'm trying to do. But if I put a limiter on there, it's gonna push it down and then make the kick drum be quieter on the times that the snare drum is hitting. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, you know. If it don't make sense, just rewind this and, and just listen to it again. It'll make sense if you listen to it about three or four times. So watch me do that, okay? Here we go. Now that I found where I should set the uh, the clipper, you don't even notice that it's clipping. It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound really distorted or anything, but it gives you that little bit of edge so that you can um, you can get that level later. Okay, 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a limiter on, on here as well. Now that one is going to soften my kick just a little bit, just soften it just a little bit. And it's going to level out, just level out my drums so that they don't get too, too loud. Okay, check it out. That's it right there. That's all you need right there. Just a, just a little bit. I like the L2 for that, okay? So let me save this because I don't want no dumb shit happening. All right, so we got the drums. Now let's get this bass together, okay? So here's the thing with bass. I got a sub bass, which is all of the sub frequency information. And I got a high bass, which in the production, this is a wider kind of, this is a wider kind of bass. And, um... I think it's a sawtooth wave or something that I did. I don't know how I made this. It's, I did it probably in Serum. And so I cut off the low frequencies on the higher bass, the one that's in stereo. And then I uh, am mixing that with my sub bass. And it's going together. It's going to be one bass sound. Okay. Because you don't want stereo bass in the sub. Okay. You can have stereo bass in the higher end of the bass, but you don't want stereo bass in the subs. Okay. So let's uh let's get to this. Check this out. So that right there is pretty much all I'm going to do to the bass right now. I know that I'm going to want to do a little bit more later, but I need to see how it's all fitting before I do it. Well, actually, you know what? No, there, there is one thing I need to do first, which is I do a side chain thing. So this is this is the for me, this is the best way to make sure that your bass and, and your kick fit well together. I've already got side chain on here. Uh, I use uh, the LFO tool. That right there is giving me the pumping effect on all four beats. Okay. But sometimes it's not enough to make sure that you have that good separation between the low end of your kick and the low end of your bass. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a dynamic EQ. And this is cool because this is with stock plugins inside Ableton. You don't need to buy anything. This is really easy to do. So we go to Max for Live, okay? Inside of Max for Live, there's a thing called the Envelope Follower. And there's a thing that's called Bass Side Chain, okay? So we pop that on our kick, all right? All right, you have this set. You have this first one set to 50%. You have the second thing set to 0%. I'm not sure what those, thing, what those numbers are exactly for, but... I know that that's the way it's set. I made a preset with it so I don't have to think about it over and over again. 
but make sure the first number is set to 50. The second number is set to zero. All right. Then I'll go over to my bases. Uh, the bases is a bus track that I made of all the bases of both the bases put together. Okay. So on this track, the base bus track, I put an EQ eight. All right. So here's my EQ eight. Now this is obviously set up wrong. So now I set the first thing to peak or whatever that is. That picture is right there. I set the frequency to 50, 50 Hertz. And then I set the Q to 0.2. Okay. So now I was set like that. I turned the adaptive Q off. Cause if you don't have the adapt, if you have the adaptive Q on, it's going to make it really a tight, a tight band and push it down a very specific frequency. It's going to push it down on 50 Hertz a lot and kind of bypass the other frequencies. But in this case, I don't want the adaptive cue. I want it to hit a lot of frequencies. I want to basically hit everything below like 100, 150 Hertz. Okay. I want it to push down every time the kick hits. This is going to, uh, to make the EQ go down. So let's do that right here on the kick drum on this envelope follower, you hit map and then you go down to the bases bus and you touch the gain. Now the gain knob is mapped to the envelope follower. Watch this. Every time the kick hits, this is going to duck. keeps it really tight. Okay. Now I don't think that's enough. I like it to go all the way down, down 15 DB. Okay. So in order to do that, you got to boost up the, uh, the envelope follower. So in the envelope follower, I'm going to boost this gain up until the kick is going all the way up to the top. Watch. There you go. Now that right there is going to make it. So you're going to have clean kick and clean bass. You can hear both of them very well. They're going to be meld perfectly together. You're going to have a super, super powerful sub and a super powerful kick at the same time without having to decide does the kick have to lead or does the uh, bass have to lead? No, nah, they can both live very well together if you do it this way. And I like this a lot better than multiband compression because with multiband compression, it has a release. Um, so with the release knob, sometimes it can hold on to the compression can hold on for a little bit too long and you can get this weird thwack thwack every time the bus, every time the bass comes up. So like if you could do this with like the multiband dynamics in Ableton, but if you do it, and you really hit it hard, it'll, it'll, the kick will come down. So then the bass will go down. And then when the bass comes back up, it'll come up really fast and it'll say, thwack, thwack. It'll say, boom, thwack, boom, thwack. And that's no good. You don't want that. That's going to sound like shit. So, um, you could make it a longer release. Hey, what's up, princess? Um, you can make it a longer release. But if you do a longer release, then you don't get the sub that you're looking for. It doesn't, they don't kind of work together the way I like them to. So I prefer to do it this particular way. It winds up being a homemade dynamic EQ. So yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see here. So the next thing I want to do, what do I have next? Oh, I got this Rhodes in here. Uh, yeah, let me turn, actually go to my main instrument. So let me get this melody in here. So we're going to get the top lead and I'm going to turn off the mic now.
Dope, 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 dope. So we're getting somewhere now. So I added the melody in, and uh, I just used, let's see here. Got me some 1073 action going on, 1173 action going on. A lot of the Waves plugins. This is basic EQ and compression. Just trying to get them to get the instruments to kind of flow together. Um, dur, 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 we got that going. All the reverb, I kind of already did that when I was uh, producing the track. So I always produce my songs first. And then I mix them. I bounce everything to audio. And then I mix them. I make sure my productions are in a really good place. Like it sounds like a record for the most part. Before I start mixing it. Then when I mix it. It enhances it takes it to the next level. So it's kind of like passing the baton to a mixer. But you're the same guy. Because a lot of people they mix as they go. And I don't know for some people may find that this works for them, but when it comes to me, if I mix as I go, it sounds like shit. So I get it to sound good and then I bounce the audio and I commit to it and then I go from there. Okay. And I think right now we're in a really good place. So. Here's another thing that I do that a lot of people say you shouldn't do is I mix through a limiter. So the next thing I do, everything is in a really good place. So I put a limiter on my master bus. I usually use the pro L no, not usually. I always use the pro L a lot. I know pro L two is out now, but I don't own it. I own Pro L1. And that's what I use. Because I'm not paying for the other one when this one works just fine. Now, if it didn't work with my with my programs, um, if it didn't work on my computer or some silly shit like that, I'd probably upgrade. But right now, it works just fine. So I stick with Pro L1. So then, before I hit the limiter... I put a spectrum right after it. Now the spectrum is a uh, spectrum analyzer in Ableton. Now I'm looking for something very specific. I'm going to boost. I'm going to basically, I'm going to smash the shit out of this limiter until it gets to around minus eight DB RMS. When it gets to about right here, you'll see the lines as they go up. Once the RMS gets around minus eight, then I'm going to look at my spectrum analyzer and I'm going to be looking for two things. One, I'm going to make sure that my kick, the sub of my kick is hovering around minus six DB. If it's above minus six DB, I'm going to low cut my kick drum until the low end hits minus six DB. And if it's below minus six, I'm going to pull the low cut back until it hits minus six dB. Then I'm going to look for my sub bass. My sub bass should be hovering around minus 10, between minus 10, minus nine, minus eight ish. If it's minus eight, I'm really pushing it. I'm looking for it to be minus 10 to minus 9.5. Somewhere in between there. If it's staying in that level, it doesn't go really higher than that, then the base is in a good place. If it goes higher than that, I turn it down. If it's lower than that, I turn it up. And then from there, I leave those instruments at that spot. And if anything else sounds out of balance after I make those adjustments, then um, I just adjust those other instruments and I leave my kick and my bass alone. Okay, this is the secret to being able to mix and have all your songs sound consistent, even when you don't necessarily have the best treated room or necessarily the best speakers. I have a pair of um, Yamaha 8s, the HS8s, which are pretty good speakers, but 
it's hard to hear. I don't have a subwoofer, so I can't really always tell if I have enough bass. This is the way I always know that I have the right amount of bass. So here we go. Check this out. It's going to get a lot louder, so just be prepared to turn the speaker, turn your uh, headphones or turn your speakers down. So it seems like it's, it's it's in the ballpark now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dealing with some parallel distortion. It's going to help it to, um, it's going to help even out some of the sound because now it sounds kind of thin to me. So now I got to add a little bit of mid range. So I'm going to do some parallel distortion on my, on my uh, sub bass. I'm going to do some parallel distortion on my kick drum. Check it out.
Now it's perfect. All right. So I see what the problem here was. This problem was that I forgot to cut off the high, the uh, the low end on the high base. The high base had too much free, low frequency information, and that's why there was a problem. When you have stereo bass and 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 your um, when you have stereo bass, the the volume goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And it's hard to get a very consistent low end. And I was looking at my meters and I'm like, why is it not consistent? It's not, it's not, it's not consistent. So I'm like, okay, I think I got stereo bass. And I did. So I fixed it. I cut off that low end and now I can kind of adjust everything pretty easily. I'm gonna keep messing around with it. Now let's get these horns in. Nice. Those horns sound pretty good. All right, cool. I think the drop is in a really good place now. 
So now I can move on to some other sections. Let's see what I got here. <laughs> Thank you.
Now we're going to hit these vocals. So now I'm hearing that new pad that came in and that's sounding a little, it's cool, but it's not the way I needed to sound in this mix. Need it to be a little bit more weightier and uh, maybe even a little bit wider in that attack. Boom, boom. Might be a little bit too much. So I'm going to see what I can do about that. So I'm going to go with this Waze plug-in. The studio rack is pretty dope. So I can kind of have my presets set up. And I can do a whole lot of stuff with it. But actually, with this, I don't think I need a preset. I think I'm going to just use the SSL. And I'm going to EQ into my compression. And I'm going to do a fast attack. And we'll see how that works. <laughs>
getting somewhere good. So now what I'm hearing is I'm not liking the way the drums are opening up. I want them to open up a little slower. If you notice, there's a high, high low pass filter on the drums at this section and it opens up slowly to get build some energy up. And I think that it's just opening up a little bit too fast. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna try and just uh, let's see if I can just expand this white noise and maybe that'll that'll make it better. Let me see. That's kind of cool. Let's see it and try it again. like that makes actually the drum sound a little bit better but I think it gets a little too loud so I'm going to put a utility plug in on and I'm gonna turn the gain down automate the gain down just a little bit on it just to make sure that it doesn't get too loud let's see what it does
So I think that actually may be the song right there. I'm going to play it from beginning to end. And we're going to see where we're at with it. See if I need to make any adjustments. So after I mix the song, which I think I just finished this mix. And uh, I'm going to listen to it all the way through. If I hear anything that jumps out of me that I say, oh, I need to change it. I'm going to change it after I listen all the way through. And then I'm going to put it away. And I won't open it up again until tomorrow so that I can uh, give my ears a break. And uh, yeah, see, see how, how it feels. But I think this is a good place to be in right now. And uh, it feels good. I think uh, I think I got a record done. And then I'll do the mastering later. But before I did to that, I need to see how I feel tomorrow. So I'm going to play it from beginning to end. Check it out.
Cool. That is dope as fuck. So there's one more thing I need to do. I need to put a, what I call is a sign fall. Some people just call it an 808. I call it a sign fall because it's a sign wave that falls down. And if I can find serum, uh, where did I put it? Here it is. So this is a preset that I made in serum. I use this kind of sound to mark the end of sections. And I only do it if there's no bass. If there's a bass in that section, this won't work, okay? So this is the preset here. It's just a sine wave that's gonna go All right? I'm going to make a box for me to put some MIDI information in. This song I think is in C. Oh no, it's in G. This song is in G minor. Boom. So I'm gonna do a G. Okay, they can go the whole measure. And now we're going to listen to it and find the right volume. That was it. Bam. I'll, I'll turn the mic off so you can hear. That's pretty much perfect. Let me just turn that there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this into audio. So basically I'm going to freeze the track. And then uh, I'm going to flatten the track. That's how I turn, that's how you turn stuff into audio in Ableton. Makes it really easy. You don't have to bounce everything down individually because that's a pain in the ass. Uh, let's see, let's flatten it. Cool, and now I'm just going to put a fade on the end. Let's fade it out. Because it cut off in a weird way. Let's see how this sounds. Sounds good to me. Now I'm going to check my meters. Make sure that it doesn't go above those areas that I said that it shouldn't. Let's see. That right there is pretty much a record. So I'm happy with that. If you guys learned something new, make sure you comment below. And let me know if uh, this helped you, if you like these kind of, this kind of content. And uh, hopefully, you know, this you learned something and, and it helped you out. I want to thank you all for checking out my stream, hanging with me. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you all on the next one. I'll be live streaming tomorrow. Uh, but it'll be a concert. I'll be uh, performing. I'll be DJing and playing trumpet. And uh, what's up, Gerald? What's happening, man? Um, yeah, so I'll be live streaming tomorrow on YouTube and on Facebook at the same time. So come join the stream on YouTube or Facebook. And uh, I'll be DJing and playing trumpet tomorrow. So I just wanted to bring you guys in on this today. And uh, hopefully you guys learn something. So. All right now, peace.